Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm taking a day trip to Honesdale, Pennsylvania. There's some history and some interesting stuff I want to check out. So first I'm starting off with making my coffee. I'm using the Starbucks white chocolate mocha creamer with some Cool Whip on top. I also added in a scoop of collagen. I got my outfit ready while the doggos were still laying in bed sleeping. As you can see, they were super tired. And then I got a bagel and Zola automatically went in her room without me telling her because she knows and she thought I was leaving right away and that's what she does. She goes in her room and now you are going to see my bagel. And this is my bagel that I got. It is a butter and cream cheese gluten-free bagel. If you know, you know, New Jersey, I always have to have bagels, but mine has to be gluten free. And then we stopped at Wawa to get this salad, and then we started off the morning with traffic. As we got more North Jersey up to the left corner, it started to become more hilly and curvy, and some mountains and cliffs were showing up here and there. And now we were passing Sparta. Look at this view, wait for it. I got this view and I was like, wow, amazing, love it. Look at those mountains, look at that view. Then we passed ShopRite, I was like, that's new, that's nice, looks great. <laughs> and then we are passing Lake Culver in Branchville, New Jersey. After we drove a little bit and then we got to the Delaware Water Gap or the Delaware River. So we passed from New Jersey over into Pennsylvania, which let us pass through a small town called Milford, Pennsylvania. Milford was founded in 1796 by Judge John Bettis. He actually created this town to be like Philadelphia. He named the streets after his kids and family members and the lanes after his favorite fruits and berries. There's Blackberry Alley, Pear Alley, James Street, Gooseberry Alley and John Street, to name a few. Here we are passing some of the stores and a little Christmas tree lot and then a cigar and cigarette discount outlet. And yeah, just a bunch of little stores we passed. Here is Lake Wallenpack or Wallenpo, Wallenpack. I'm not 100% sure on that pronunciation. Then we drove past this farm and we were just driving on these hilly, curvy, turny roads that was honestly making me slightly carsick. I'd like to say you know when you're in Pennsylvania when there's farmland and just open land and hills and mountains and here we are entering the town of Honesdale. Now we are going to pass two lights and make left down Church Street. This will lead us to Central Park Honesdale on the right and my destination house on the left. The man who wrote Winter Wonderland wrote the song in this house that we are about to go to, looking out at the window at Central Park, Honesdale. This was the house of Richard Smith, or Richard, quote on quotations, Dick Smith, who wrote the song Winter Wonderland and other songs, but Winter Wonderland was the one that went off, but sadly, he passed away of tuberculosis shortly after the song was released. This is 922 Church Street in Homesdale, Pennsylvania, where Richard wrote the song Winter Wonderland in 1934. He was born in 1901 and passed in 1935. One of the first things I saw was this leave a book, take a book, or take a book, leave a book. And I was like, oh my gosh, you literally only see these in small towns. So I got super excited over that. And then there was a sign that said young ones at play, no smoking or tobacco free zone. And then we crossed on over the street to get to the house. The house before the house of our destination, <laughs> there was a for rent sign for a four bed, two bath house for 1800 a month. Richard 
quotation, Dick Smith's house actually was turned into a law office, so it is still functionable in there as a law office and not an actual house, and so I was like, wait, should I, should I go on it? Are we allowed to? And so we stepped on onto the porch, and there was a QR code that you could probably pause the screen and scan with your phone, and it brings up a website of some information. So here is a clear view of that. I just find this to be very interesting and history to be interesting and how these people like lived here and stuff. So here I'm saying like, oh, this is the door. <laughs> this is where they entered. Look at this. And it's just so like, amazing. This was history, and here's the sign that has some of the facts on it that you could also find on the websites, and here is the view of Central Park Honesdale, the park. Here is the view. And then the rest of the little town. I got a little video of the house in the background with me walking, and then I actually also took a photo of me next to the house. because. I was just like, so cool. Take a photo. This is the painting on the side of the take a book, leave a book, and another photo of Central Park. On the way to the museum, we passed Hotel Wayne, which was built in 1827 and then rebuilt in 1895 for a reason that I'm unsure of. We found the museum and gift shop and it turns out it was actually closed. We were searching for the door that was open and I was like, wait, there's a fence up, the doors are locked, what is happening? Turns out we went the day that it was closed. So we just got a peek through the window. So we walked down here a little bit. And then on our right is the train or the steam locomotive, that, which is called the Storbridge Lion. It was the first locomotive to operate in the United States in 1829. This is actually a replica. The original is in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, DC, which I sadly did not find out until afterwards. So that was slightly disappointing, <laughs> but still very cool to see. Here is what is shown in the museum. I showed as much as I could through the window. There's some facts and some little mini models shown throughout and some photos and of people and everything all around so i'm sure there's more facts listed on the internet you could find it looks super cool wish i could go in wish i learned more but it was closed so again disappointing but what are you gonna do After leaving the window and peeping through, I passed this holly bush and I said, oh, look, it's me. And then here's another interesting fact, fact plaque. There's some interesting facts posted around. There you could read some interesting facts. And then we walked down and I was looking for some shops to go in, but I, I really couldn't find much. And a lot of them are closed. It was a weekday. So I'm not sure why everything was closed, probably because they don't get much business. And then we passed this shop and it was like a rock and roll, I forget what it was specifically called, but it had some interesting stuff in there. And actually there was a cat walking around and my friend read off a t-shirt and I was like, what? And it was this t-shirt. So all I heard was, you know what's not funny? You, so shut up. <laughs> So oh, of course my reaction in the mirror was like, excuse you, what did you just say to me? And it was the t-shirt. So here's the cat walking around. He or she was just, just there walking around and doing whatever cats do. <laughs> After walking down that street, most of the things were closed and or there was nothing there to walk into. So then we decided to go home and that was my day trip.